This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to access, add, and modify keyboard shortcuts in Premiere. The other piece of setup that we want to go through is changing keyboard shortcuts. If you're on a PC, keyboard shortcuts will be under the Edit menu. If you're on a Mac, keyboard shortcuts will be under Premiere Pro. Once you get there, this opens up the keyboard shortcut screen. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that my screen is so small at 1280-720. It cuts off the bottom part of the window, which is an undo button, a cancel button, and a save button. They work with keyboard shortcuts, so which is why I'm not worried about it, but they're there on every screen except mine. Several things about keyboard shortcuts that I like. First, if you're new to Premiere, the default set of keyboard shortcuts that goes with Adobe Premiere is fine. But if you're migrating for another application like Avid Media Composer or Final Cut Pro 7, Adobe has created keyboard shortcuts that are similar to those we used in Final Cut, say, but map to Premiere shortcuts. This is set by going up to the keyboard layout preset and selecting the software that you like. Adobe made major changes between CS6 and CC, which is now the default. And really what it did is it emulated most but not all of the Final Cut 7 shortcuts. So if you're somebody that's been using Premiere for a while and want to go back to the old flavor, you can do that. I'm going to leave it at the default. The way we find a shortcut is you just simply type in that which you're looking for. Here I can find all the shortcuts that allow me to nudge, increase or decrease audio volumes. And notice that there is a possibility of assigning a shortcut, but there's no shortcuts assigned. If you look at the keyboard above, you'll notice there's two colors, blue and green. Blue indicates a shortcut that applies across the entire application. Green is a shortcut that only works when a particular panel is open. For instance, green might be, if you're in the timeline, then this shortcut works. But if you're in the project panel, this shortcut does not work. So here, for instance, the letter Q has both an application shortcut and a shortcut for the capture panel. Or here, Ripple, the letter W, has an application shortcut, a capture shortcut, and a titler shortcut. You can learn more just by hovering your mouse over here. Well, let's just take a look here. Notice under Nudge Volume, it'd be nice to create a shortcut. To do that, double-click in the Shortcut column, and notice that this dark square shows up. What should I make my Nudge Volume shortcut to be? I know. I'm going to hold the Shift key down and the Option key, and any key that's gray does not have a shortcut assigned to it, with those two modifier keys. So I'm going to grab the letter Q and drag the letter Q right down here. And there it is. Option Shift Q is now the keyboard shortcut to nudge my audio volume up 1 dB. That is so cool. And if you don't like it, click the X and it's gone. So to create a new shortcut, click so you get the dark box. Hold the modifier keys down that you want. We'll do Shift Command and Option, drag the letter in, and now it's Option, Shift, Command, Q to nudge the volume up or down. Well, one of the challenges I had when I was first learning Premiere many years ago is that I had such muscle memory for Final Cut 7, and as you know, the arrow tool there is the letter A, and in Premiere, the arrow tool is the letter V, and I was forever typing the wrong key. It was a problem. So let's find that Move tool. Let's look for the Selection tool. I just typed the first part of Selection. And there's the Selection tool. And notice there's the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter V. If I click just to the right of it, now when I type the letter A, I have applied two shortcuts for the same command. If I type V, I get the Selection tool. That's the Premier version. If I type A, I get the selection tool. That's the Final Cut 7 version. In fact, I could create three shortcuts. In fact, the most I can create so far that I've gone is six. There are probably more. I can't imagine why I need six. 
but I can have as many shortcuts as I need from a practical point of view for the same menu command. So you can have, I don't know what Media Composer uses for their move tool, but let's just say it was X to pick a letter. I could have V and A and X all assigned as keyboard shortcuts to the same menu option. If you decide you don't need that, just click here, that little X, and it's gone. So we can search for shortcuts. We can create new shortcuts. We can delete shortcuts. And we can have multiple shortcuts applied to the same menu. And when we're done in the low right corner, click the word Save and put this window away. If you want to put it away without making changes, press the Escape key. The Escape key is the same thing as clicking Cancel. And you've canceled out of that dialog. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar covering the basics of editing in Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for webinar 281. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. Membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com membership. And thanks.